Well, let's get going here. We do a couple of adjustments to make sure we're in good shape. One, two, three, my audio seems to be working fine. Let's see if we can get a couple of our uh, panelists to join me here. There is Bob. There is Merrick. Hey, Bob. I think you're muted, Bob. There is Merrick. Merrick's Merrick. muted too. There we go. So Merrick, you can unmute yourself. And uh, guys, we were going to um, follow up today with um, um, working on, I think, uh, paid uh, Facebook advertising. But I think we may have Kate and or some of her uh, cohorts uh, from Elite Digital join us next week. Uh, so we can we can add their feedback into that if uh, if she's able to do that. So maybe we'll uh, we'll push that one off till uh, till next week. And um, uh, we have people just uh, tuning in here as we're getting going. Uh, Bob, what questions have you heard that people have about what we've covered so far, or or that are kind of general questions about uh, uh, online advertising? Well, I mean, I wish I got a lot more feedback. So everybody, first off, let me start by giving my number so we can help out if uh, there's anybody uh, that's looking to have a further conversation with us. My phone number here, uh, and we can also schedule a time that best works for you. So feel free to call or text me, 720-256-0208. Again, that's 720-256-0208. And you're welcome to visit martialartswealth.com. You can also uh, schedule an appointment right there. But, um, you know, as you know, Master Oliver, I talk to a lot of school owners every day. Yeah. And um, uh, the primary uh, thing that a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of the schools are looking to improve upon and believe that it's – they just have to figure it out for it to be the sole home run is to figure out Google AdWords, how to drive traffic through Facebook. And then of course the other uh, common uh, lead source would be word of mouth. Sure. So, and we know that those aren't, uh, that's not it, even though those are helpful, but uh, that's not going to give the home run. No, you know, uh, if, if anything, what we find is, um, you know, a term I stole from Jay Abraham many years ago is marketing Parthenon. The, the real way that you're going to ensure that you're growing every month is to have a lot of things going on and be effective and efficient with each one of them. Um, so, you know, if you, if you start with, if I want 20 new students a month or 30 new students a month, have 20 or different, 30 different things going on. Some of them may be a trickle. You may have rack cards and flyers on the pizza boxes and, banded signs and a, a banner on the on the school but uh, all those are very inexpensive they're easy to do uh, you may have a little trickle of, of, of volume and then Google is just uh, you know I see a lot of familiar names here that have uh, tuned in so far you know Google's just the uh, mostly the current version of the yellow pages uh, it has a lot more tracking that you could do I mean the yellow pages you couldn't track much of anything and it has uh, uh, more flexibility but it really, uh, with, 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 with Google, other than retargeting and, you know, some, some um, display ad opportunities, really what you're, what you're at with Google as far as search is, is no different than somebody who's looking, you know, looking up in the yellow pages. They're, they're Googling and you're only as good or as bad as search traffic. Uh, Bob, I think what I'll do is I'm going to, uh, um, I don't think there's a way to do it in group, but I'll do it one at a time here just kind of promote our attendees all into a, a panelist and let them ask any questions at all that they, they want. And we can kind of go from there. 
and uh, pick up from uh, from there. So there's okay. Chris Martinez and uh, uh, there's David Grout and there's uh, another David. Wow, there we go. So we start look I look like our normal member meeting. Here's Joseph Walker. Here's uh, Jimmy. So we'll change direction a little bit today. Um, there's Jeff. There's Rudy. A lot of our members joined us today, so that's always a wonderful thing. So guys, I'm, uh, I'm making you guys live. You have to unmute yourself. Uh, but what questions do you have on, on the subject? And let's say only subject, although it's a big one, of, of, of effective internet marketing. Here's one of our most effective members online, Jeff Patterson. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll add him to the conversation here. A couple of people I've promoted to uh, panelists that haven't shown up. Let's see, uh, see what happens. So pretty much everybody should be live on camera and you can speak by just unmuting yourself. Who has some specific questions online or, or some, uh, some results you'd like to share? No? <laughs> uh, always, 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 always. Pastor Oliver, this is Dave Grout. Yep. Um, you know, thank, thank you as always for all the stuff you do. You keep, adding more and more stuff for us all the time. Um, uh, my question has to do with, you know, uh, I've got a, a, an operation right now and, you know, with, with trying to deal with employees and stuff, but implementing some, some of these things, uh, how, you know, do you, would you look at hiring somebody to assist you in setting up the, you know, or, or doing some of these things for the for the internet operation. If so, how how would you go? I you know you have Merrick and, and you have a huge operation. You know how could I benefit from getting somebody else to help us out? Well, I I, I think it's a really good question, and 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 I would start with um, you know may, may, maybe make a simple three components, right? What one component is prioritization. You know what in today's day and age is really essential, and then what are things that are less essential and less essential? Uh, number two is start uh, the following. See how to say this right. I've always had the the um, um, predisposition to always learn how to do all this stuff myself before I ever delegate it, right? And in management, you can delegate a task meaning you give them specific objectives, you give them what the task is, you train them on the task, you supervise, uh, you see that the outcomes, right? I mean, it's, a, it's an involved process where you don't lose any responsibility for it. Or you can delegate, which is kind of metaphorically, throw it over the wall, hope for the best. And a, a lot of pieces of, well, I would say of every piece of your marketing are things that you should delegate, not abdicate, right? So you should understand it enough that you know if somebody's getting good results for you, bad results. And with all marketing activities, having good stats gives you that sense, right? So, um, you know, if you take Google Analytics, for instance, and your website, well, you're going to know how many unique visitors, what the bounce rate is. And the bounce rate, what it does is it tells you, for instance, um, people who perhaps were Googling, you know, some fighters uh, a fight record to make something up here uh, on the fly. And they show up at your site for martial arts lessons and what they were looking for and what you are, are completely unrelated. So the bounce rate are people who show up that just immediately leave, right? Uh, and that's a indicative of whether the targeting, uh, both SEO and pay-per-click and, and, uh, uh, and everything is, is, is on target, right? Uh, but another stat is, of the unique visitors, how many opt-ins did you get? Of the opt-ins, how many uh, appointments did you get? Um, and, and it can be a multi-step. So how many, how many opted in with name and, 
phone number and, and email address, how many opted in beyond that with perhaps mailing address, how many of those made an appointment, uh, how many of, of the opt-ins did we get hold of. And once you know those numbers and have a mechanism for tracking those numbers, then you can delegate pieces of it and know whether they're doing a good job or not, right? And I remember years ago now, but Sony was doing these uh, um, uh, video development seminars for professionals. And I went and took a week and a half of video editing and, and, and so forth. And second or third day, the, the uh, very nice uh, professional instructor uh, came up to me and says, why are you here? I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, you're never actually going to do this yourself, are you? I said, no, but I, you know, I, I can't really delegate to somebody else if I don't know what you can do, what you can't do, what it should look like. So I, I would kind of start with that always, David. Uh, but my three steps were know what priorities are, know what the numbers are so you know whether you're getting good or bad results, right? And then also know what what you can simply automate to get done on a regular basis so that it doesn't require uh, focus and time on your part every day or every week. Does that make sense? And what we will talk about is we'll talk about uh, prospect follow-up, automating uh, systems to do all that kind of stuff. And it's a little off the topic you were asking about, but it's an important one. One place I see people hand it off to a website company or something is they'll hand it off and then all of a sudden they don't have a good uh, prospect follow-up system. And that's always a mistake. Uh, you want to make sure that it's integrated with text message follow-up, email follow-up, broadcast voicemail follow-up, that a text is going to your phone or your program director's phone so you can call them immediately. If those things don't happen, then, you know, the, the opt-ins are kind of worthless because if, um, you know, if I drip them with 82 emails in, uh, in um, uh, two weeks, but I don't pick up the phone and call them while they're on the website, I'm still not going to get a very good conversion rate. Does that make sense? And I know that was a big kind of all over the place answer, so I'll try to hone it back a little bit for you. Uh, but does that help so far? So, um, but let's step back into priorities. Regardless of what you're doing as your primary marketing method, whether it online is Google pay-per-click and uh, Facebook, for instance, or whether you're predominantly massive referral activities and uh, uh, live event marketing, direct mail marketing. What we do know the dynamic is nowadays that especially for the kids market, but it's true in all the markets, but especially in the kids market, the average soccer mom, I think the stat is 85% of them, before they come in or before they enroll are gonna go Google you, right? Google you meaning they're going to either put your name in or they're gonna put a series of keywords in looking for you if they're already aware of you and coming in and what are they looking for they're looking for uh news they're looking for ratings they're looking for you know google ratings perhaps yelp ratings uh facebook ratings but when they google you they're looking for you know people who are dissatisfied people who are satisfied they're looking to check you out right so what we know, and, and perhaps we blame Amazon for this, but what we know nowadays is we're in one of those uh, environments where what the opinion of the crowd is, is important. So from a priority standpoint, I always start with that. If they're going to go Google me, and I mean, the easiest SEO uh, experience in the world is to be found easily when somebody searches for your name, right? And I, I hear all the time people say, oh, our, our SEO is great. I type in my name and I come right up. Well, that's not exactly a difficult thing to do, right? Um, but you should do frequent vanity searches. In other words, you know, uh, type in your name personally, your instructor's names, type in the name of the school, type in a variety of keywords that would be, you know, to find you. And then look and see how you show up there, right? We, we, we're in a business where your average, normal, happy student who's been there for nine months isn't going to have a bright idea one day to go online and give you a five-star review because you're just a wonderful person, right? What happens is without you orchestrating, and this is true of a dentist, a orthodontist, uh, you know, um, right now restaurants are, are in that mode. Amazon, if I buy a book from Amazon, 
I read on Kindle. So if I get get to the end of the Kindle, they're asking me to do a review. So it's kind of normal for people to review books if they're uh, uh, buying them from Amazon. It's kind of normal for people to review restaurants, maybe on Yelp. But it's not, you know, the, our type of business is there. There is no normal mechanism that the general public is used to it, right? So what you do have to do is you have to orchestrate, and I'm not saying make them up, pay somebody to put false reviews or anything, but what I'm saying is you've got to orchestrate to get your students to go online, go to Google, and then go to Facebook and give you positive reviews. Because if you don't do that, what you'll have is you'll have, you know, the idiot down the street who's pissed off that you're uh, doing better than he is. Uh, so you'll have somebody at the school owner go do an anonymous one-star review, and then you'll have the one disgruntled person this year who didn't even understand what the conversation you had was will go do a review. And so with left unmaintained, you'll end up with two or three negative ones and, you know, few if any positive ones, right? So I always start with that as a priority. And one of the best ideas I heard uh, was from one of our members, Ram DePena down in San Antonio. Uh, what he organized is when he enrolls somebody, then um, a few weeks later, he's doing a formal progress update before their uh, first belt. And he just incorporates into that progress update. Uh, one of his questions is, is um, assuming that they're happy and they're not complaining about everything. Ms. Ms. Jones, uh, uh, can I ask you a question? Have you had a chance to go online and give us a, a, a review? Oh, no. Well, it sounds like Joey's really excited about things. Would you mind? Here, let me text you the link you need to go to. Would you mind doing that for me right now? It's, it's very helpful. Oh, sure, no problem. Here, I'm going to text you the Google link. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, maybe the Facebook link. Let me text you that. Okay. Um, he got over 100 reviews in, uh, in, I think, 90 days, just incorporating that into a normal progress update system. I've got a few other people that I'm gonna promote into a panelist here. Another one is uh, Jeff Patterson, who, who's in the car. Uh, he's on here, but he keeps kind of floating in and out. And what Jeff did is pass around the laptop in the school, but with Google, you can't just pass it around on your Wi-Fi signal because uh, they will know that it's uh, all coming from the IP address and flag it, same IP address and flag it. So Jeff, are are you on a stable connection now? Yeah, I am. A, a, explain the hide my ass uh, uh, strategy for Google reviews. Um, one of, one of the things with Google reviews that we've been doing is uh, with with every different program we have here, we have a specific Facebook group uh, for that program, and we put a lot of special content up for the students. And so when they join we invite them to that group. And once we have that connection with them on Facebook, we send a, uh, a request, hey, I've been at the academy for a little while. You're, you know, you're doing good with the program. We'd really appreciate it if you'd you know, pop us up a review on Facebook or Google. And we've been getting, you know, I think, I don't, I don't know, I've got th close to 350 Google reviews and 180 Facebook reviews. And uh, it's, that's really been a, a successful thing for us doing that. Excellent. Excellent. So, so there everybody has two really uh, effective strategies uh, for getting um, uh, five-star reviews. So David, when it comes to prioritizing, that's a place I would prioritize, okay? Is make sure that no matter where they come from, that when they go look for you online, that you're gonna, you're gonna show up, um, um, you know, um, uh, platinum uh, uh, coded, right? Um, Jeff, while I have you, and, and um, um, you've been pretty good on, uh, on um, uh, Google uh, pay-per-click traffic as well. Get, give us some uh, plus and minuses of your experience tracking back five years that we've been working together on this stuff. On the, uh, just the pay-per-click stuff? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's been working really well. I've, I used to do it on my own. Um, right now, I'm using a company that helps me out with that. It's only 400 bucks a month and it's way worth it because it's a pretty big time investment to do that. Um, they're, you know, they're testing probably three, 400 words a month. Whereas for me to do that is a lot of labor and a lot of time. 
And um, so with the 400 bucks that I'm paying them and about my $800 ad spend, it's bringing me, you know, anywhere from 35 to 45 solid leads. And those are like the strongest leads I get every month, which in turn moves over to at least probably 15 to 20 new students every month. And uh, for the $1,200 investment, it's way, way worth it, the uh, money. You bet. And uh, uh, let's analyze a little bit of what you just said is you said testing uh, maybe 300 different keywords. Uh, make sure everybody understands what a keyword is. You know, o o over many of the years of, of me running schools, a keyword was judo in the 60s under ye in yellow pages. Then it was uh, karate, and that was for years, and then it became martial arts, right? I mean, all I had to know about keywords is we want to be in the karate section of the yellow pages, and that right. was about it. And occasionally, we would experiment with being under, uh, put an ad under schools or an ad under, uh, you know, some other uh, category, which they were kind of hesitant to do as well. Same reason Google is careful because they want uh, appropriate content in each section. But nowadays, a key word is whatever the prospect is going to come up with in their mind to find a martial arts school in your area. So the key word is, is, is going to be, and there's you know, lots of different possible combinations, but it's going to be some combination of karate martial arts, some style of martial arts, teaching, instruction, school, program, lessons. And usually it's going to have some geographic designator Although a lot of people are now tuned in enough to know that Google's doing that for them based upon their IP. So sometimes they don't do that, right? And when you're doing a lot of this yourself, and I've done a lot of it myself, and um, um, am not a particular fan of doing it myself, because I'm not, uh, Google always annoys me. They're, they're, uh, they make it difficult. Merrick, is that a fair way to say it? Although you're a techie guy. Um, he just smirks. But, um, um, what you one of the keys to getting good results on seo and good results on pay-per-click is to be found under lots of different keywords right jeff and google when you're doing the advertising yourself every time you type in a keyword like karate or taekwondo is it gives you keyword suggestions and so what, what a lot of us do is is intuitively we say well, anybody who's looking for me is going to type in MMA and uh, uh, school and adults, you know, let's say. Well, I got to tell you, no matter how tuned in you're, you are, your guess is usually wrong. But if you're just under a, a small subset of keywords, you're missing a lot of the traffic. Uh, the other thing that Google does is when you're doing it is it gives you projected click inventory. All that click inventory in Google's uh, terminology is, is how many people are likely to search under those keywords to, to make it simple. Does that make sense? Um, and Jeff, you, you're now delegating it um, to a company. Is that a national company or a local company? Uh, it's a national company. Uh, one other quick thing on the keyword. If, if you're finding keywords that are working well that aren't the norm, like for example, uh, women's Brazilian jiu-jitsu in Portland, Oregon. Um, and no, nobody's website is womensbrazilianjiu-jitsu.com in Portland, Oregon. So if you write a blog post with that keyword focus, a lot of times your blog post will come up number one in a Google search as, as a website. And so doing that, um, focusing on those long tail keywords in your blog post is really valuable. And uh, we've gotten a lot of traffic from doing that. Does everybody understand what he said? It's a really, a really good contribution. Um, but the Google is going to, to find blog posts and find YouTube videos and find content based upon keywords. And I'm, uh, this is oversimplification, but basically there are two things that are going to determine how well your website shows up. And I'll, I'll probably end up with three or four. But one is the number of incoming links. So you can do blog posts out and about on the, on the internet and, and, and post links coming back to your site, which gives you a linking strategy. It also gives you content to be found. 
it also finds material based upon recency and uniqueness. So if there's the same thing posted 25 times, then Google's going to ignore 24 of them. But, but it, and I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying, but generally it, it's going to prioritize uniqueness and recency. So as you're po posting recent content, unique content that's loaded without being spammed with <coughs> words, you're going to find you're, you're, you're coming up better on that. And again, that's one of the reasons, back to your question, David, is to delegate, not abdicate. Because the more awareness you have about things like Jeff just said, unique keywords you come across that people are searching, then the more you know you should go create some content or a web page or, or something for that to be specifically found in, in that area. Does that make sense? So that's a, a good contribution, Jeff. Tell us about your, uh, if you don't mind who you're working with, but uh, uh, about your process of working with them, how much you have to be engaged with it, how much you feel like you had to know before feeling comfortable with using them. Uh, well, it was nice knowing a little bit about what was going on, but really they're pretty professional. Um, they're co the company's called Logical Position. Um, they, uh, uh, they send me a monthly report, and if I want, they'll go over a monthly call with me to kind of let me know if they have any new strategies or anything they want to try and test out and uh, get my okay on it. Um, but really, other than that monthly check-in, it's no time on my part. I mean, you know, and that monthly check-in is maybe 15, 20 minutes. So it's a pretty minimal time investment, which is really valuable to me because I'm so busy all the time. So it's been sure. good. And Jeff, you know, to give everybody context, you have a, for one of a, a, a better way to generalize, an MMA school. Uh, you have Muay Thai, you have uh, uh, Jiu Jitsu, you have um, um, Tai Chi. Um, Something else, right? Eskrima. Eskrima, there you go. Um, in Portland, Oregon. So to give everybody context of what you're talking about. And I, I, I do think that um, two things are true. And Jeff, um, um, contradict me or, or, uh, or expand upon this either way. Is a lot of MMA schools were really focusing almost exclusively if not exclusively on SEO and, and pay-per-click. And if you look at click inventory and there, there's, there's ups and downs, but generally over a five year horizon has been trending downward. Uh, so where a lot of people could just focus on pay-per-click and they were getting plenty of traffic in the MMA world, uh, that's trending itself downward. Have, have you found that to be more or less accurate, Jeff? Oh, yeah, like 10 years ago, when I first started doing SEO stuff and kind of focusing on that, we were killing it. We were, I mean, I was signing up anywhere from 40 to 60 students a month, and we were on top of it for, for a couple of years. We were strong. We were growing. My school was over 500 active students. Um, and then started competition started coming around, and a lot more schools started coming in the area. You know, there's over 100 jiu-jitsu Muay Thai schools in the Portland area right now. And so that changes, you know, you divide up all those searches between those schools and, the, and that competition and you get a lot less traffic that way. So you got to get more creative on how you're trying to get in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, uh, um, and, and I guess the, uh, the takeaway for that is one, go back to the Parthenon. If you always have a bunch of different things going on and one of, one of the legs collapses, or gets less and less productive, you're still in great shape, right? The other um, uh, concept that you're illustrating there, Jeff, embedded in that is the concept of marketing in a vacuum versus uh, the place where you're marketing in competition with everybody else. And really with what we teach, the only place that any of our members are ever in competition with the other um, uh, martial arts schools at all is Google, right? Is you know, no matter what you do, some of the other guys are going to be fairly sharp. And in your case, the MMA world, probably because of me, because I taught this stuff to Lloyd Irving, who taught it to a lot of BJJ and, and MMA guys, uh, is, you know, more so than other niches, say the traditional Taekwondo or, you know, Japanese karate uh, uh, practitioners, more so the MMA guys got 
uh, attuned to being good at Google, but also probably because it was pretty fruitful pretty quickly, right? Um, and at the same time with that decline, I was finding at its peak that the soccer mom looking for uh, lessons for a seven-year-old daughter, you know, were very, very weak. Although I think uh, the trend line has been positive in that direction. So the more traditional schools are now in a more fruitful environment with, uh, uh, with pay-per-click and with SEO. And the MMA market is still productive, but it's trended way off, one, because of competition, and two, just because of the click inventory. In other words, the number of searches is down. Um, over the year, in, in a comparable with Yellow Pages, you know, I got to tell you, in the 80s when it was Karate Kid, if you didn't have a huge Yellow Pages uh, ad, you were, you were in bad shape. But there were years not, you know, not too far after that, a couple years later, when you'd go pick up the book once a week and look at it, make sure it wasn't printed in disappearing ink uh, because it just fell off a cliff, right? So um, uh, <laughs> the good thing is nowadays you're paying for clicks, you're not paying for uh, positioning. So Jeff, the, the traffic you're getting for one location for what'd you say, $1,100 a month, um, I would have had to in the uh, uh, mid nineties be paying 4,500, 5,000 a month in yellow pages. Uh, just to hope to be in front of that much traffic uh, from the yellow pages. So that's a, the nice thing about the internet world is it is it has only, we're only paying for performance. We're not paying for exposure in most cases, not all, but in most cases. Uh, Jeff, you had a couple of other um, 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 uh, takeaways on the on the Google advertising. What else might it be? You you do quite a bit to be fresh and relevant and put content out. Give them some thought about the blogging that you do and where you put the blogs and how that works. Um, well, we're, we're trying to be pretty active with the blogs right now. I'm, I've been really trying to make a, a strong run with the uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and build that up. Um, so I'm focusing on different keywords in that area. Um, you, you know, Google, Google searches your site fairly, fairly regularly. So the more fresh content you put up on your site, the more value they get there. And, when you're writing blogs, one thing that can help more than anything is where you're getting the links from. If you can, one of, one of the things that I've found to be really valuable is if, if you go out and do a little bit of research on some other high ranking websites, you can oftentimes find a blog or find a idea that they're talking about and then go research it a little bit and write a pretty pretty good take your time write a write a pretty solid blog on the idea that they're referring to and then contact the web developer and say hey i've got this blog that really fits in with something that you're doing um, would you mind sharing links with me and send them the link to your blog <clears throat> and tell them that you and then also go a little bit ahead of that and find a find a couple blogs that they're doing and say hey i really like this blog that you wrote and like this blog that you wrote um, could I link to those blogs and send some of my traffic your way? So you're kind of um, helping them out a little bit too. Um, but sometimes you can get a site that is ranking pretty well to link to your site. And the more of those that you get, it really helps get a lot more Google juice to, to your website and uh, helps in your rankings. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's, that's good feedback. Anybody have any questions on this uh, so far? Uh, Master Oliver? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Jimmy Higgins uh, in Washington, D.C. One of the things you can do also in blogs, if you want to get good PR values, you can actually find a lot of forums that allow you to post comments or questions. And you don't want to spam these guys. You want to actually ask questions or give some you know, feedback. But you can always do a signature. And your signature shouldn't be your website as much as it should be an anchor text that says, you know, one of the best martial arts in this area. And then you link it back to your site and you get, you can go pretty much to all these big places and you're getting links back to your own PR. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's good feedback as well. And uh, yeah, you know, I will say what, what's happened over the years is a lot of what you hear taught is, is ideas that are two, three, four years old. And, you know, if I'm doing something that, you know, was working really well 10 years uh, ago and, and try to do it now, a lot of times it's going to get me uh, um, blacklisted <laughs> rather than uh, benefit. So it's, it's good to not get, uh, uh, um, 
you know, be behind on this stuff. But that's uh, that's really good feedback. Thank Sir, you. Do you have any Do you have any new strategies that you're hearing about um, on SEO side of things that uh, that might might be worth chatting about? Well, I, I, I would I would say it's kind of the opposite. Is you know, all kinds of cool stuff keeps dying off, right? <laughs> it is, uh, it, 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 it's it, it, Google and the others, but mostly Google, keeps getting more and more intelligent about what they're doing. That anything mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I used to really like to do that was, in essence, spamming the search engines in today's terminology, they're, they're getting wise to, right? So what what is really important nowadays, and... and uh, you know, and, and let's take what you said, Jeff, what Jimmy said, add to it YouTube, because we haven't talked about that very much. Because, of course, Google loves YouTube because they own YouTube. And they, um, 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 a big, big search engine is, is people searching in YouTube, but also Google searches YouTube. So one of the things I always tell people is make sure you're putting lots of fresh videos up all the time to be aware that Google is or will, but I think the right word is is, searching for the language in the video for keywords, as well as the keywords that you designate in the description, right? Uh, so, so they know what's being said in the video. And so just like you said, Jeff, when you're doing blogs, if there's a specific keyword that you find that's fruitful, if you do a video where the, where the audio not spamming it, you know, don't say it over and over a hundred times, but where the content is about that um, uh, overtly and you target that in the description and the tags of the video, that's going to rank well both in Google and it's going to rank well in YouTube, right? So that's one thing that we hadn't discussed. Um, I think more and more for businesses like us, being really, really good at, you know, whatever they're calling it this week, Merrick, what, what are they calling it now? Google local, Google, Google plus, Google business. I think Google logo. They, 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 they keep having uh, schizophrenia, what they want to want to call this. But being really good at that, having lots of, of quality YouTube videos posted in your Google plus or your Google business page, having lots of good photos in there, making sure that the map link is up to date, getting Jeff, as you said, 350 five-star reviews in there uh, so that that's um, um, dominant. I, I think that that's important. Um, anything that Does I ever have a YouTube video on your website and redirect somebody looking for something that might be on that video directly to your website. Is that correct? Well, I, I, I'm not saying have a YouTube video on your website, although there is, a lot of reasons in a landing page to do video rather than have it static uh, HTML. What I'm saying is use YouTube as one of your search engine uh, efforts, right? Uh, because one, there's a lot of search traffic in YouTube, but number two is Google indexes YouTube well, you know, because they, you know, it's fully owned by Google. Uh, and Google indexes what's said on the video as well as what tags you put used to be you could kind of put up any video you wanted as long as you tagged it well and it might show up pretty well. Um, but they're getting very, very good at sorting out duplicate content and sorting out things that nowadays are considered spamming. So it's got to be original. One, you know, one of the things that, uh, that we used to do is we have, I don't know, 10,000 pages of content in the can. Uh, as a guesstimate, Merrick, you can tell me more or less, but uh, lots of pages of content. So I used to give it, you know, give it to uh, 20 schools at once and they could post it up as blog posts. Well, nowadays that works against you because they immediately recognize that as, as duplicate content. And if you posted it um, uh, five years ago, they recognize it as just duplicate of old stuff, not new stuff. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, that's where there's a lot of information that's three years old where people are still doing things that are going to be counterproductive rather than productive. Master Oliver? I didn't answer your question very well, Jeff, but uh, that's more my observation currently. Master Oliver? Yes, go ahead. 
Um, I do weekly, I do a self-defense YouTube, but are you stating, just for my clarification, um, more like maybe doing a YouTube video on traditional martial arts and the advantage or something like that, or something that people might be keen in, um, in, in improve uh, self-esteem or are you, I, so are you saying do more that way um, that hits those different topics and keywords or, um, or what I'm, it was what I'm doing. Okay. I mean, that's, and, and I do a weekly self-defense tip. I do it for Facebook, for the community, for, um, you know, I, I really try and get it out there and I pose and I'm, it's always on YouTube. Yeah. So, but should I narrow that focus to more things moms would be looking for or more, um, that, that, that was kind of my question to the group, I guess. <laughs> well, yes, yes, and yes. Um, okay. You know, let, 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 let's start with getting inside of the prospect and what they might be looking for. And oftentimes what we're putting out there in the market isn't what they're looking for, right? Is, again, in the kids' market, for instance, you know, a soccer mom with a seven-year-old, they may be looking for – you know, I'm looking for my kids being picked on and I'm trying to resolve that. Or, you know, my child isn't very disciplined in school and I'm trying to uh, resolve that. They're, they're, they have a problem in their mind that they're trying to fix. And usually what they're not particularly, um, other than Google search, so I'm differentiating a little bit, but usually where a parent comes around to martial arts, is they're trying to solve a problem. They haven't just independently decided my child needs to be in martial arts because I was and the grandparent before them was and it's the, you know, the family tradition or whatever, right? So you do want to have lots of different solutions to different problems that are explicit, right? Um, there's always the question, and Jeff addressed it quite well, is it used to be to get found out in the search engine, we were wor worried about quantity, not quality. Nowadays, I think you're more worried about quality than quantity, right? Is It has changed where instead of just throwing out a jumble of keywords that is a write-up, you're, you're, you want somebody to find it, be a little tuned into it, like Jimmy said, then you have your uh, signature line and they want to track you down or, or learn more. So you've got to be careful about not just throwing out a bunch of junk, right? Uh, however, to get, and that's different. Um, you know, we still have stuff that's up online from 10 years ago that, you know, wasn't much quality involved, but there was a lot of quantity. Um, one of the things on, on YouTube, though, in order to get quantity is you have a little intramural tournament, you know, since, you know, two or three people around with cameras or phones and get snippets of every ring and post it all. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, but then, you know, go have them do little interviews with parents about the benefits and why they did this and what it is. And if you want to give each of them a few keywords they want to prompt into the conversation, all the better. So now, uh, you know, in our case, we have intramural tournaments of like 750 people. I could get... Um, if I wanted to, a thousand uh, uh, video clips um, and put it up there. And I could get, you know, I could get, um, I don't know, 50 that were an hour long, or I could get a, a thousand that were two or three minutes long. Um, and, and by the way, on, on uh, uh, one of the trends, Jeff, and this isn't directly responsive to what you said either, is YouTube is where people go to watch long form video uh, longer form video is having trouble on Facebook, right? So what, what folks thought a year ago is that everybody was going to turn into production studios and there's going to be all this live TV and all this stuff on YouTube, uh, not on, on Facebook. Well, Facebook is still, people are jamming through, uh, spending three minutes, you know, going through their feed. And if there's a video, they watch a minute or two, but but getting people to watch long form video on, on Facebook doesn't seem to be happening. An awful lot of big companies um, and big companies, meaning, you know, high quality marketer types uh, 
you know, have not been very successful in long form on Facebook, but they're very successful in long term in YouTube. So I know even my 10 year old, you know, there, there'll be a, there could be a YouTube video if he's interested in it, that's an hour and a half and he'll watch an hour and a half. Uh, but that's not what's happening in social media. Did that help a little bit, Jeff? Yeah, thank you. You bet. But I would be aware of, I think in, in Facebook, uh, you know, doing live cast videos is useful. Facebook still hasn't given up on trying to get uh, uh, a position well in, um, in video. So live casts get boosted out pretty well. Uh, on YouTube, I would, you know, I would put lots of, especially long form stuff there, but make sure the audio content in the video as well as the tags give a geographic tag as well as uh, our specific to keywords you're trying to do. Merrick, I've, uh, uh, you've been uh, the, the tech guru silent in the background here in the, um, and for all of you guys who are 50 below, Merrick, what's the weather like out on your deck right now? <laughs> no, 60, 65, I think. 60, 65, yeah. Well, Denver is gonna be 50 and sunny today. So uh, uh, for all you guys in Minneapolis and so forth, you, you chose to live there. Uh, just say, but uh, uh, Merrick, what what would you add to this as far as Google SEO? What I, what I might not have touched upon there. It was all, all said well. I think uh, what you can add is uh, also the videos and uh, photographs, pictures. Like like Steven said before, if you post the video on YouTube or Facebook, make sure your description uh, has keywords has uh, benefits and has also your website link or link to your special. So it's not just a bunch of clips, but those clips come with the tags on the bottom that you can subscribe. Uh, you can describe the video with your keywords and also use the tags and make sure there is a link to your website, which is very helpful. Yeah. Uh, the same thing might be done with the pictures. So every picture can have a caption. Who is in the picture? Where is it? Uh, also, the pictures are also alt uh, data. So you can uh, basically type description of the picture which is hidden and might show up when you move over the picture. So another place you can use your keywords. Um, so make sure the pictures has a captions and descriptions and alt tag. Same with the videos, the description keywords and a back link your website on from Facebook or YouTube or what platform you're using, you know, is a good one. Um, it's not just the content URC, but the Google search code and see those all these descriptions and keywords and metadata inside your website that you, you usually people don't see or don't see at all because they see the picture or video. So it's maybe to add to the description of pictures and video clips. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, if I go back to when I wrote the book on internet marketing, the first one is uh, an awful lot of what you did back then. And, and keep it in mind, I mean, this is, you know, we were trying to get uh, high ranked in Alta Vista and, um, uh, you know, get in the Yahoo directory. And the only pay per click was uh, go to, which became Overture uh, by uh, Yahoo. Um, so this is, uh, you know, pre Google. Uh, but back then you did a lot of, of, of spamming. The search engines, meaning you loaded up keywords behind the pictures, loaded up keywords in the pictures, you know, loaded up uh, keywords in the meta tags, loaded up all the keywords in the description and links down below. Um, and it is still important that if you have multiple websites, make sure they're linked to each other. Uh, when you go out, um, uh, post, uh, put your school in the various martial arts directories you know, make sure that you put your website and link back. All those stuff, all those things are still helpful. Um, it's just when you, you know, Google doesn't let you, uh, uh, doesn't, it, it, it blacklists you for spamming the search engines nowadays rather than that stuff helping you. Anything else to add to that, uh, Merrick, before we uh, uh, run out of time in a minute here? Uh, and like you said, you know, uh, you have to use your, your keywords and description and metadata wisely. So if you use uh, some some description that doesn't make a sense, 
or using just the randomly use of keywords that if somebody re read the article, it doesn't make a sense. So this is like counterproductive. So right keywords in the right place uh, is a key. Yeah, good, good. Um, hey, Jeff, let me shift back to you for a second. On, on a normal week, um, well, on a normal month, how many enrollments would you do that comes from some combination of, of your online activities? To simplify, let's just say Facebook advertising and Google search and uh, SEO. Um, probably 98% of our enrollments come from that. Um, this month we're on track to, we're, we're at about 44 right now for this month. We're having a pretty good month. Usually it's around 30 to maybe 30, 36, somewhere in that range. Okay. And how many uh, hours do you personally devote at a keyboard working on this stuff per week? Uh, I try to write uh, maybe two to four blogs a month, which usually take me about a half an hour a shot, um, maybe another 10, 15 minutes to post it up and work the SEO in. And something Merrick mentioned earlier about the alt tags and the keywords when you're making a blog, something I did mention earlier, it's important on the blog when you're putting photos up and stuff like that to alt tag them and put keywords in the photos on your blog as well. That helps with the uh, SEO for, for, for that long tail keyword you're trying to promote. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, how much time uh, per week or per month are you personally? Um, I'm putting maybe uh, in the Facebook stuff that I'm doing. Um, I have a company that's doing some for me, but I'm doing a little bit on my own. I probably put another hour and a half to two hours a month into that. And as far as online stuff, that's about, that's about the most of it. Okay. So, so let's say conservatively an hour and a half a week. Yeah. Right. And I, I want to point that out because I have yet to see a very successful martial arts school owner who is sitting at their computer during the day, during productive time, otherwise, uh, at their keyboard every day, all day, uh, doing this stuff. What I do see is people who get fixated on confusing activity with accomplishment and people who get fixated on online being the only source of their, of their uh, traffic and in, end up going from an hour and a half a week, uh, and Jeff, you're very productive with this, uh, an hour and a half a week or so, and, but it ends up becoming an hour and a half a day, then it becomes three hours a day. And then it's, they're sitting in front of a computer screen, you know, from uh, uh, 9 a.m. to uh, 2 o'clock every day. You don't want to be doing that. And, and uh, again, I mean, I work with, um, you know, a lot of the top internet marketing people around the country, you know, in the, in the broader market. But uh, if you, uh, Frank Kern is one of the, the high profile guys. He says the same thing is, you know, he, he, he spends most of his productive time with a legal pad, um, you know, in his library thinking, not sitting in front of a computer doing all of this stuff. Um, and Jeff, you, as you mentioned, you're contracting out to a company who's doing your pay-per-click. You're contracting out to a company who's doing part of, not all of, uh, your Facebook advertising. Um, you're still uh, using uh, North Edge, right? So yes. North Edge is a company that we've worked with. I think I started working with them because of your recommendation, uh, if I remember correctly, or Travis took. Um, North Edge is one of them. Elite Digital is a company that I work with. Um, uh, we probably have them on with us next time. But there, there is a, Jeff, if you don't mind me sharing, and then we're going to have to wrap up. There is a question that happens a lot. It goes on in my mind. Jeff, you and I have had the conversation a couple of times. And the question tends to go like this. I'm paying these other guys a grand a month or 1500 a month or, you know, 400 a month, whatever it might be to do this thing that I know how to do. Shouldn't I just fire them and do it myself? Right. Um, and if, as a, as a management tool, uh, you've got to take a look at that and say, what is my time got to be worth? And it doesn't matter that I can do it. What matters is what does my time have to be? Uh, Jeff, on an, on a uh, well, last year, what did you gross last year? Um, I, I'm not sure yet, but I think it's about around maybe between seven seventy-five and eight hundred. Okay, 
So roughly, let's say 800,000, 800,000 800, by, uh, uh, by 50 weeks. Uh, quickly, what is that? Um, uh, 20,000 a week, uh, is that right? Divided by uh, uh, 40. Uh, that gives you what your hourly return for anything has to be, right? Uh, it's a simple, simple computation. What's your target gross divided by 50 weeks, assuming you take some time off, divided by 40. Uh, that's what you've got to do on, a, on, a, on an hourly basis. You know, to me, if I can delegate anything that's under a thousand or two thousand dollars an hour, I delegate anything under a thousand or two thousand dollars an hour. I'm not going to, you know, on the stupid end, ever change my own oil or, or do my own laundry. Uh, but on the higher end, if I can, if I can have somebody doing my Facebook um, advertising, assuming I know what it's supposed to look like, and what the outcome's supposed to be, and I can have them doing it for me for a thousand dollars a month, that might take me uh, uh, four hours a month. It's a bargain, right? Uh, and you talked about paying somebody four hundred dollars to manage your pay-per-click keywords. Well, that's you know that's a bargain. If it took you one hour a a month paying attention to that, uh, it would be a, a misuse of your time. So is, is that a, a, a good re, um, restatement of some conversations you and I, I've had over the years, Jeff? Yes. So it's something to be aware of. Hey, we're out of time in about 90 seconds. Any last question before we uh, uh, go on to our next session next Wednesday? Yes, you need to, is it yes. Go ahead. Okay, I have a question. Jan, but it's not Jan. <laughs> Hi, it's Misha. Yeah. Um, what do you recommend, like what should we be paying for our Facebook leads? Because we really only work with one company so far for our Facebook leads. And um, I just was kind of wanted to get an idea from you guys what you guys are paying for your Facebook leads. Well, there's, there's a short answer and a long answer to that. Jeff, do you know top of your head what uh, was costing you per uh, lead on Facebook? Well. A, one, one thing I'd like to point out when you're thinking about that is, is what your overall investment is bringing in. So it really doesn't matter what you're paying for the lead, but if you spend $3,000 for the month and you get even five signups, it's worth it. So it, I, I try to look at it in simpler terms instead of tracking what every lead is worth, even though I do look into that. I think it's more important to know, okay, this brought me 10 new students this month. I paid this amount of dollars. Was that a good investment? And if it wasn't, then go back to the details of, hey, can I test this out and maybe get a little lower price per lead or whatever and try to fix it on that side. But I think it's easier to look at the, the bigger picture than cost per lead. And the bottom line is the most important thing anyhow, right? So I mean, if you're generating a lot of leads, maybe you need to tweak it so that uh, it's, they're converting a little better. And Jeff, you stepped all over my answer. But that's great. Uh, that means you're uh, very knowledgeable about what you're doing, and uh, and you're probably sick of hearing my voice on this stuff as well. But the, the that's the right answer. Is there there's there's two really important numbers for you to know, right? One important number is what the lifetime value of a student is. Our target for our members for you uh, down in Jacksonville is to be six seven thousand dollars, right? So if the lifetime value of a student is six or seven thousand dollars, or maybe it's four thousand, you got you got to know what that number is. But if it's uh, uh, six or seven thousand dollars, and it costs you eight hundred dollars to get an enrollment, you're getting a ten to one return on investment every time you do it. You should be tickled to death, right? Uh, the mistake that people will make is look at everything they're doing, and one not factor in the cost of labor and say, well, all this advertising is costing me too much. All this stuff we do over here that's putting in labor isn't costing as much, but then they forget to value in the cost of their labor, of their staff labor and so forth. And some of our bigger schools do real well with labor intensive activities, but they've had to hire a full-time person to do that. And you've got to factor in that 50,000 a year or 60,000 a year or more salary right? So you want to know what the lifetime value is. You want to know what the cost per source is. But on every source, if the cost is giving you a good return on investment, the question is you want more of them, you know, from that, right? And Jeff pointed out, and I, I think he's right, 
in an, uh, an environment like Facebook, what gets missing a lot of times is the lead to appointment ratio can be bad. So a lot of times, if you just spend time on that, make sure somebody's getting them on the phone as soon as they opt in. You have a text going to your program director to call them. You have a text going to the individual, you know, to call you. You have a, Jeff, I believe you have a countdown clock on the landing page. You know, if you contact us directly by phone the next hour, you get an additional free month. Are you still using that format? Yes. Yeah. So, so if you look at ways to tweak lead to, um, uh, to contact and therefore to appointment, oftentimes that's the biggest thing that needs to be fixed. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, I was asking because we've um, never worked with a company to do the Facebook leads before and we've had some issues. So we were thinking about switching and trying a different company, but yeah. we really have no idea like what to compare it to. But sure. I, mean, I mean, what you said, of course, it all makes sense. Yeah, yeah I, I, for every source, I want to go from how many enrollments did I get back to how many intros did I get back to how many appointments did I get back to how many leads I got and I can subset that in in between but then if i'm looking at what the cost per enrollment was i can back it into what the cost per intro what the cost per appointment what the cost per lead is and then i have a pretty good benchmark of whether i feel good about that or not right i've seen a lot of schools getting you know 100 or 200 dollars per enrollment from facebook and my first reaction is fantastic and my sex second um uh, reaction is usually don't get addicted to that because that may well, you know, it, it's going to get more expensive as you go. Um, and Jeff, you're getting you're getting incredible results on Google. Uh, what the trend line has been is Google and Facebook getting more and more uh, expensive as they go because clicks are costing more as they go because they recognize the value to the members. So you do have to think in terms of long term they're going to it's going to escalate not go down. That didn't directly answer your question, but you know, if I, I just, go ahead. Sorry, sir. I, I just pulled up one of my ads just to kind of give you an idea. Um, uh, I just redid the ad yesterday. So far we spent 30 bucks, we've got 12 clicks. So yeah. we're looking at, what is that maybe? Uh, Less than three bucks per click. Two, two, 250 a click or something like that. And how many, uh, do you know how many opt-ins you got on that? That was 12. Oh, got 12 opt-ins. Yeah, 12 opt-ins. So you're getting really cheap leads there. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know what your ratio of lead to uh, appointment is? We, we try, we, we usually get about 75% to schedule an appointment, but only... 50% Facebook leads usually show up if yeah. that. Uh, Facebook leads have been pretty flaky overall, but again, it's been way worth the investment because if it brings us 15 students a month, it's. Sure. I, I think, you know, in, if, you know, for those who have been around long enough, you know, the way you think about it is Google is just like uh, um, yellow pages. The good thing is nobody opened the yellow pages if they weren't a buyer. The bad thing is they're scanning through everybody else at the same time right? Um, and Facebook is like a TV ad. Um, um, and I, you know, sometimes I say like a magazine ad, but really it's like a TV ad because it's a broadcast media. They're not going to go back and see it. They can't pull it out and, you know, put it on a magnet in the refrigerator or whatever. So it's, it's, it's like a TV spot where they, they can be really hyper responsive without having put any thought into it. Uh, and therefore, you may get really cheap leads, but you may get a, a pretty low conversion to an intro, but that's okay if it's inexpensive enough and you're, you're getting enrollments inexpensively enough, you're, you're fine with that. Uh, well, with that, we're a little over our time limit. We will follow up next Wednesday. Any questions you have, feel free to post them up in the Facebook group or whatever, and we'll, uh, uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jeff, very much for your contributions, by the way. Thank you, sir. Very welcome.